Mummy? Mummy, what's wrong? It's me, Liz. No. No, don't come near me. What's the matter? You're not real. You can't be. Mummy, don't. It's all right. It's only me. Oh, I thought I saw you before at the door, but I told myself I was just imagining it. We came through the time barrier. Simon and me. Simon? Simon Randall? Yes. You remember how we used to be able to go in and out of the time barrier? Well, this time it's brought us here. Oh, not here. It's not possible. Why not? Jean, the director asked me to ask you about... What are you doing here? I thought you'd gone away. No, no, don't hurt her. I don't want her here, Jean. She had no right to Leave come. Leave her alone. It's not her fault she came through the time barrier. Just as you were able to do once. Just as she was able to do? Yes, Liz. Try to understand. Beth is you. You, when grown up, you're one of the same person. It's two people but my only daughter. It's the trick the time barriers played on us. This is me? Yes. But, but how? Doesn't matter how. What do you mean by coming here? We've no use for you, don't you realise that? I didn't plan anything. Then what are you doing? Following me? Spying on me? Simon and I were just trying to get home from the naval station, but when we came to the barrier... Oh, that the... ridiculous barrier. Those absurd tricks with time. It's not my fault. Childish, immature. How long will it be before I finally outgrow them? This, this is really me grown up. Honest. Yes, Liz. Listen to me. I don't understand it all either, but somehow or other it's happened to us. People do change, you know. At a certain time in my life, I had to take some important decisions. Break with the past, become a different kind of person. But why? What's the matter with me? I'm still as I always was. I don't want to change. My dear, I was a little idiot when I was you. I had to do something about forcing myself to grow up, finding a purpose to my existence. We can't be fools all our lives, I'm afraid. You see, Liz, you have to appreciate how much things have changed for us in the last years, how very much. Beth wanted to come here to the icebox in 1980, and it was just about that time we lost our home. Why I... did we lose our home? How? won't talk about that. I was able to come with her because I'm a telepath. And the director was interested in having some experiments done in that field, so that's how I live now. Experimenting with telepathy, while the others experiment with physics and medicine. And Daddy? Well, is he here too in this ice box? The question is, what's to be done? You obviously shouldn't be in this time phase at all. He is here, then. But there may be more to it than meets the eye. I shall have to make inquiries. What inquiries? Simon and Liz just happened to come through the time barrier exactly as she says. Tumbled through, I suppose, by the merest chance. Sort of. I don't believe it. We don't accept such explanations of things in the icebox. There have to be deeper reasons for men and women committed to the advancement of science. What's science got to do with it? Oh, Liz, when you find out a little more about the icebox, you'll only ask what science hasn't to do with it. Stop that, Jean. I can still say what I want, can't I? There was never any agreement. I shouldn't speak my mind. If you start it all again, I shall only have to report you to the director. You know I will. What's she saying wrong? Keep out of it. I won't have you interfering just because you burst in on us from the past. As far as I'm concerned, you're something that's finished with behind me, dead. Why did she change her name? Liz was child. I was asking Mummy. She just wanted to be different, Liz. But why? Something happened in 1980. We don't have to answer impertinent questions from you. In fact, you'll keep your mouth shut from now on. And I'll find out the real reason why you're here. There isn't any real reason. It's just as she says. Is it? Did you know that the computer had identified Liz and Simon as the volunteers for the A-B experiment, Jean? Now, there's a very odd situation, wouldn't you say? The computer doesn't make mistakes. Keep a close eye on her. Wait! I don't know anything about being a volunteer for an experiment. It's wrong. The computer doesn't make mistakes. But you must know why I'm here. Well, I mean, if you're me and, and I'm here, then you must remember this. Simon and me coming back from the naval station and getting into the ice box. <laughs> don't waste my time. And then going home to tell Mummy and the others. Mummy, you remember. After Simon and I had been in 1940 and we found out about the radar and why Daddy was sick. Yes, Liz, I do remember that. Well, for goodness sake, we came on here. No, Liz, no, I don't think so. I didn't know a place like this was ever going to exist in those days. There, you see? All nonsense. 
I want you two to understand this matter's not to be discussed until I find out everything I can. I'm certainly not having it noised abroad. I'm one and the same person as this stupid child. back on purpose a second time, but only because I'd seen you in this room and had to know what it was all about. But I didn't mean to upset you. It's all right, Liz. You couldn't know about it. It's the kind of upset I live with all the time nowadays. You mean you don't like it here? And Daddy? You still haven't told me about Daddy. Liz, this has been an awful shock to me. Would you mind if we didn't speak any more about it just now? So, what happened to you, eh? A rocket from the director? You bet. Oh, you'll have to get used to it, Simon. Here, we're all expected to behave as scientists should. The work is what matters. Our personal lives are on a bad second. Yes, I'm beginning to get the idea. And your friend, Liz? Oh, well, I don't know. Oh, I hope she'll be all right out there on the ice field. But the computer will find her if she hasn't strayed out of the area. Cheer up. Dr. Bukov? Yes? Well, I'm still finding out about things around here. So I was wondering, what do you do exactly? Me? Your work. Well, um, I'm a physicist, Simon. Everything depends on nuclear energy here, so I have charge of all that. And then I'm continuing the experimentation into the uses of controlled radiation, you know? Oh, yes, yes, I see. Intelligence enhancement, eh? What? The enhancement of intelligence bringing people to the limit of their intellectual powers. Oh, of course. It was a great step forward when we discovered the link between that and controlled exposure to radiation in the 80s. But you still have to have the right subject. I'd like to do more on the work, try and give it an application to everyone. Yes, yes, I suppose so. And you've had a course? A course in what? Intelligence enhancement. Oh, no, no. Oh, that's strange. From the beginning, I wondered why else you and Liz would have been chosen for the AB experiment. But the computer never makes mistakes. Oh, look, don't worry so much about the director sounding off at you. It's his job. I've got to have a talk with Larry. You come and have a chat, too. Book off. There you are at last. What's the matter? Well, my message said pronto, didn't it? Come and look. Now, this is the power graph for section four. Isolated from the general operational record. Watch. There you are, a blank in the record. 0516 hours this morning precisely. A five second power shut off in section four. But that can't happen. It's there. I gave the reactor all its checks last night. There's no conceivable reason for it. Just as there was no conceivable reason for the three minute water supply closed down two days ago. But that was my baby, and this one is yours. Your turn to have human error blown down your ear, Bukov. Oh, yes, yes, sir. I'll have to inform the director, certainly. Well, what's wrong, Dr. Bukov? Uh, the power supply cut off for a brief period early this morning, Simon. It's nothing to worry about, but we've had a number of little things like this going wrong recently. Uh, Bukov to director, operational report. It's funny, he seems to have switched off his audio. Huh? Well, he must be going into depth research. What's that? Depth research? Oh, a very complex process, Simon. It's something the director has to do every so often to make sure our work here is proceeding along the right lines. Only he has the talent. A five-second power failure. The director must be a very clever man, Larry. Are you kidding? He leaves ordinary mortals like you and me for dead, son. Why, with the computer to check his calculations and generally help his line of thought? He must be just about the sharpest scientific mind in the world. He's a strange man, though. I suppose he's related to that other Deborah. What other Deborah? Oh, but of course he's dead now. But I remember reading about him in my History of Science book back home. Well, I wouldn't know about that. All I know about is him. And the thing that really bugs me... Yes? Well, haven't you noticed? He never seems to see the funny side of anything. He hasn't got a sense of humour.
Jeez! Where did you spring from? Well, where do you think? The time barrier. You came back. Quick, can't you? But your father. My father? Oh, he changed his mind. You mean he let you come? Mm. Why? Well, why not? Well, you, you were so set against it all. I was even afraid you'd get into trouble over oh, me Oh, you coming. get afraid too easily, Simon. But, well, I suppose I talked him into it a bit. You did? Yes. Then you wanted to come back. Why, Liz, that's great. Simon, I've just found out something awful. I've been discovering things too. The director... No, I mean something awful. For one thing, Mummy is here. I've just talked to her. Well, what's so awful about that? Nothing, except she doesn't seem to like it all very much. She's doing experiments in telepathy. Oh. And that girl, Beth. Well, what about her? Well, you see, Simon, Beth and me... Yes? Beth and I are the same person. Oh, I mean it. It's dead crazy, but it's true. You see, we've come into future time, and what I've found out is that Beth is me as I'm going to be in 1990. You're joking. I wish I was, but I suppose it's all possible with the time barrier and so on. No, even Mummy says it's so. You mean you're going to grow up to be like that? Well, it's not my fault, is it? Isn't it? I don't know. Blimey. Where are you going? Oh, nowhere. Just, just for a stroll. But you can't walk out and leave me. We've got to talk about this. Well, talk about what? Simon, a minute ago you said you were glad to see me. I was. I am glad to see you. To see you. But if you're going to be Beth... Simon, come back! I'm sorry to intrude, but I wanted to report to you at the earliest possible moment. The girl volunteer has been found, Liz. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sound physical condition? Perfect. Splendid. Yeah, that's splendid. We'll uh, initiate the AB experiment as soon as possible. Uh, start the volunteers on HA57 at once, please, Beth. I was wondering, Director, is that strictly necessary? Necessary? Is to start them on HA57? Yes. They hardly seem the right kind of people for a prolonged stay in the icebox. So couldn't we just use them for the experiment and then get rid of them as quickly as possible? Beth, you know as well as I do, there has to be a prolonged period of observation afterwards. Anyway, part of the scheme is that the volunteers should be kept at their present age for an indefinite period. I should like to suggest they be replaced, then. Why? Well, they hardly seem the right kind of people for our community here. How do we even know they were the volunteers we were supposed to receive? Beth, you're not suggesting I hope the computer has made a mistake? No. The computer instruction read, expect arrival soonest. But it didn't say necessarily these arrivals. Well, if these aren't the expected arrivals, who on earth are they? That's hard to say. Out here, middle of the Antarctic, do people arrive here by accident? No. Unless... Unless by some means we don't fully understand... Well, oh, this is a fine development. I'm sorry, Director. I thought you were the one person I could rely on, Beth. But you can, Director. I thought you understood. I've admired your work here on the administrative side, you know. I've been thinking for a while I should have a personal assistant to relieve me of some of the responsibilities. It had occurred to me that you might be the right person for that job. Oh. Not anymore, it seems. Well, why not? I haven't said anything to make any difference. You're questioning, Beth. The computer requires blind obedience. I require it. No matter how unlikely, how perverse a particular directive may seem, it is beyond all question the right one. Liz and Simon could not have come here at all if the computer hadn't summoned them. That's the fact. Everything else is irrelevant. I'm sorry, Director. I've been silly. I beg your pardon. Now go and start those volunteers on 8J57 at once, Beth. That's what's required. That's what we do. Yes, Director. Ouch! There you are. That's your last anti-infection booster. Hardly a disease known to man that you could catch now, either of you, even if you wanted to. All set, Beth. Thank you, Dr. Joynton. Well, come along. You fed in all the vital data over ten minutes ago. How long do we have to wait for the HA57 dosage? Oh, the computer takes its own time, you know. How about some music tonight, Beth? With who? Me. Uh, when we're off duty, I've discovered some good old-fashioned Andre Previn in the repertoire. 
We could have a go at it together. Thank you, Larry, but I've got better things to do than listen to music tonight. You've always got better things to do, haven't you? When it's me making suggestions, anyway. I'll listen to some music with you tonight, Larry. You? Liz, honey, I didn't know you cared. I didn't mean it like that. I just like music. And I don't like girls who can't be polite. Oh, <laughs> did you hear that? They'll be fighting over me any minute. Oh, Liz, be mine. We'll make such wonderful music together. <laughs> really? Uh, come over here, I'll show you something. What's that, Dr. Bukov? This? Well, Simon, this is what you could call our last ditch. Oh, last ditch against what? Well, we have to provide for every emergency here. So if by any unlikely chance the computer were to blow up or the reactor fall to pieces, these little bottles would be our salvation. Well, in what way? They contain antifreeze. Oh, yes, I see. To stop us bursting when it gets cold. If everything failed here, we'd ice over. So we'd swallow these and manage to survive until help came. Short-term hibernation, yes. We've solved the problem of that. But as for long-term hibernation, <laughs> that's a headache. Did the director invent this antifreeze stuff too, sir? Oh, no, that's a development from a much older technique. HA57, that's the director's great claim to fame. It must be a pretty extraordinary formula. Only he knows the secret, and he keeps it up here in his head where it can't go astray. So there's nothing written down, then? Now, why should you want to know a thing like that? Like what? You want to know too much, for, particularly for a boy who's only a volunteer for an experiment. Look, a moment ago I said we have to provide for every emergency here. Well, we do. So, if anything were to happen to the director, and that's the unlikeliest chance of all, there's a testament somewhere. A testament? The work will always go on, you see, Simon, no matter what. The work is what matters much more than us. There's your order, kids. Hot on piping. Come and get it. Dr. Joynton, do you have to behave on all occasions as if you were summoning cowboys into the ranch for supper? <laughs> you don't have to mind me, Beth. Ruffers bags Joynton, they used to call me at the medical school in Geneva. But for all that, I still turned out a better physician and surgeon than most of the smoothies in the place. There you are. Take that now and come back each day at the same time for another delivery. You feed your personal statistics into the computer, just as we showed you. Down the hatch. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Don't be afraid, my children. This one's miry magic. <laughs> what men have searched for down the centuries. The elixir of life. <laughs> was a testament somewhere explaining about the longevity drug. Well, the sooner I can get hold of that for Commander Trainer, the sooner we can get out of here. Look, I'm not so sure I want to get out of here right away, Simon. I want to find out more about M Mummy and what happened. Who are they talking about? Me? Daddy? The worst thing is they won't tell me about Daddy, whether he's here or whether he's... Liz, we'll stop and find out whatever you like, but I must find out about the longevity drug first. And now's the time. Everyone's off duty. All right, Simon. Come on. All you've got to do is keep watch. Signal me if anyone comes. Three loud knocks, OK? OK. What are you doing? Didn't you hear me? What are you doing? What are you doing? What's it got to 
do with you. I can be here if I want to, can't I? No, not without a reason. Well, if you must know, I want to see the director. What about? That's my business. I was just going to knock. It's no use knocking. He's not there. What do you want to see him about? That's my business. Leave me alone. Now, come on. I'm not having any trouble from you. The truth. Answer me. What are you up to? What's going on here, Beth? Oh, Director, this young lady was trying to get into your office. How dare you? I wasn't! Simon! I'll deal with her later. I wasn't doing anything wrong outside the director's office, and Simon There's is... There's no use calling to your friends now. But I only wanted to see the director talk to her about something. You? In here? Well, that girl? How dare you? I will kill you! No one dares pry into the director's affairs without... No one dares pry into the director... Director, I wondered if... Oh, Biko. Yeah, just the man I wanted to see. That power failure, section four this morning. I thought there was something wrong here. That power failure was your fault, do you understand? No, director, I checked the reactor. You, you seem to have picked up the germ of carelessness from Larry, but we lead an antiseptic existence here, Brukov. We don't tolerate mistakes. I should say... Human error! You seem to have picked up the germ of carelessness... Am I never to get any true cooperation from my staff in this place? Must I spend the rest of my years bearing the burden of responsibility alone? Go away! Help me, all of you! Or leave me be! Well, what happened? I don't know. He got his hands around my throat. I thought he was going to kill me. And then? Well, he just let go. You were in his room without permission. Simon, if you're going to meddle in things around here, there's something you'd better know first. Professor Devereaux isn't like the rest of us in the icebox. What do you mean by that? Just what I say. Oh, he's a brilliant man, the finest scientific mind in the world. But he isn't a human being, as you and I use the term. No, no, he's a new species, in fact. It's the biggest secret in the icebox. Professor Devereaux is different, Simon. A man of the future.